It's getting on for six months since I installed the DIY BMS version 4 on this Lifey Po pack of, well, four cells in series, three in parallel, and I think there are uh, 60 amp hour each, each of these cells. Uh, and it's been going really, really well. It's not missed a beat for that whole time. However, it's now the end of November and it's getting a little bit cold out here in the shed and that causes me a problem with this Life Epo 4 chemistry because, well, you shouldn't be charging Life Epo 4 at a low temperature. Anything below 0 degrees Celsius is a definite no-no. And thankfully, the DIY BMS V4 has a solution for that. For those of you who haven't seen the DIY BMS before, well, it produces a web page where you can actually monitor your battery bank. And here is that same Life Epo 4 set. And we can see my four cells here, which are a little bit low. Remember, this is Life Epo 4, but I've not had a lot of sun here on the solar shed roof in the last couple of weeks. So, yeah, a little bit low, but they are very much in balance just 13 millivolts difference there we can see at the top apparently they're all about nine degrees celsius that's the actual diy bms modules themselves and i'm prepared to believe that but honestly it feels a little bit colder than that in the shed at the moment but if we go into the settings section here, Stuart implemented this in the uh, version 4 of the DIY BMS that it can control external relays. And we can choose to turn those relays on and off dependent on, well, various parameters. One of which is the individual cell under temperature. Uh, and by default, that's set to 5 degrees. So we could turn on a relay if the cell under temperature or the cell temperature was below five degrees Celsius. And that's the bit I want to look at today. It's important to note, however, that it says individual cell under temperature external. On the DIY BMS V4 GitHub, we can find this schematic of the cell monitoring module. So I have four of these, one for each cell in series in my pack. And we can see this thermistor down here. Now that's giving us that reading of nine degrees Celsius, but that is affixed to the uh, PCB and is there to monitor the temperature of this dump load up here and if the dump load and the PCB for each module gets too hot well you can then choose to do things based on the, the temperature reading down here. But Stuart cleverly also included this pin header here and on uh, pin 2, no pin 1, it is you can put a remote temperature sensor so another thermistor and it says 47k here and that can be connected between i think pins one and two and we've got another voltage divider there so the uh, 80 tiny 841 can then read the temperature of this external thermistor and that's what i'm going to use today so when I realised the temperature was dropping, I bought these quickly on eBay from a UK seller. I'm not entirely sure of the origin of these, but they are 47k uh, thermistors NTC. So hopefully these will do the job nicely. But I think I need to attach some wires and then I can easily attach these to my pin headers on the modules. There we are then, four 47k thermistors attached to DuPont cables, uh, which connect here between pins two, which has two volts on it, and pin one, 
which is the midpoint between, well, what's going to be a thermistor and this resistor, creating a voltage divider here so the microcontroller can read the temperature. Right, let's get those plugged in. Sorry about this shot, but I'm pretty sure that this one here is pin one, the bottom one as we look at it, the one closest to the silk screen of the name. I don't think we'll have any issues if this is wrong, but it was pin one and pin two. They're going to connect. Yes, they do. And if we look down here at the... Mo oh, yeah, popped up straight away. 18 degrees. Look, the temperature's going up because I'm in the shed. But if I just hold on to that, what happens? 19. Oh, yeah, 28 degrees. Good. That seems to be working as it should. There we are then. Uh, three thermistors are shoved nicely in the gaps in between each group of cells. The fourth is, well, at the moment it's just flapping around in the breeze, shall we say. But uh, yeah, three points on the inside of these cells is more than enough for me today anyway. And uh, yeah, they're all reading quite happily. Uh, eight, nine, this one's at 11. I guess that's because I had my finger next to it. But yeah, they're all seem to be working. Now that I have an idea of the temperature on the inside of my Life Epo 4 pack, I need to add an element of control. And that's going to be done through one of these standard sort of relay boards that are super cheap on eBay and AliExpress. And of course, these are for the uh, Arduino market uh, primarily, and uh, they have a uh, power VCC, a ground, and four inputs in this case for these four relays. And handily, the DIY BMS is able to control four relays. And here we have the schematic of the ESP controller circuit, and up here we can see the J relay connector, which has six pins. Uh, pin one is ground, pin six is five volts, and pins two, three, four, and five are the relay outputs or the relay control pins. So yeah, this is going to be very easy to connect to that relay board. So back down at the cells and the DIY BMS controller, and this is the pin header I need to connect to. Now let's just remind myself... Uh, pin 1 is ground, and I think this end one is pin 1, so I have this connector, the grey is my ground, six pins at once, there we go, and uh, no LEDs on there yet, but that might be to be expected. Yeah, there's just four LEDs on here indicating each channel. So let's see if we can get it working. I think this is probably a bit difficult, but uh, I've set it at the moment to, if the cells are under 15 degrees, turn this relay on. So if I save those rules and look at that, that relay went on. So I can now set this Probably not to 15, but I'm going to start it off at about 3 degrees Celsius. So if it gets as low as 3 degrees, I'm going to turn that relay on. Hit enter and click save, and that's gone off again. So at 3 degrees, that relay should come on. But what am I going to do with that relay? So my Life Epo 4 cells should not be charged below 0 degrees Celsius or freezing point. However, they can be discharged at lower temperatures than that. So how am I going to use that relay to, well, prevent charging at 0 degrees Celsius but allow me to discharge them at those low temperatures? Well, that small relay is going to control this larger relay which is a 40 amp 12 volt relay and this relay is actually going to disconnect my solar panels from my charge controller when the temperature gets below that well 
that three degrees that I have set. So my solar panels will not be able to charge my Life Epo 4 cells when the temperature is too low. Now the relay module next to my Life Epo 4 cells is powered by 5 volts, the 5 volt USB that is powering the DIY BMS. This one obviously needs 12 volts, so I'm going to have to use my Life Epo 4 pack to turn on this relay. And to do that, I need to energize the coil. Now the coil is this section on the uh, diagram here, so it's between pins 85 and 86. Now that happens to be the red and the black wires on this connector and that's easy to tell because the red and the black wires are much thinner gauge than the other three which of course are the common the normally open and normally closed uh, those pin numbers are marked on the bottom of this relay but that's difficult to show so this relay will be energized by my life epo 4 pack so i've got some wires here to go back down to my life epo 4 pack via that relay module and then connect to the battery bank and uh, that should energize this relay so uh, i'm just gonna wire this all up perhaps a diagram will make it easier to explain up at the top here I've got my solar panel, my solar charge controller in the middle and my battery bank down here at the bottom. When the DIY BMS here in the middle detects that the uh, temperature has dropped below that threshold it will energise the coil here in this relay, flipping it from the normally connected to the normally open connection which in turn will energise this coil in the larger relay connecting the uh, battery banks 12 volts through that coil and back down to ground. That's going to flip the relay from the normally connected to the normally open pin, disconnecting my solar panel entirely from my solar charge controller. Now it's fair to ask why am I using two relays to achieve this, potentially I could just use one. And the main reason for that is that these relays, well they don't really have a rating at 12 volts DC and in fact uh, the voltage here could be 20 volts possibly um, and these connections are a bit small for my liking for the amount of current that might flow from my solar panels into uh, my life epo 4 cells it's also a bit easier for me with the wiring if i place the relay close to where the solar panels connect into the solar shed and put this relay down by my life epo 4 set it's also probably worth mentioning i will fuse this 12 volt feed into this relay so this circuit here will be fused and i'll probably do a one or two amp fuse, I'm sure I won't need anything above that. Okay then, the coil of this relay is connected to my Life Epo 4 batteries via the first relay on that module. So if I change that value now to 15 degrees, as I did before, click enter. Did you hear that click? Well, I did, and I can see that the other relay is on. So this relay is now energized and if i change that back to three degrees celsius it went off again perfect so here's where these solar panels come in 250 watt panels uh, to feed this solar charge controller which then charges those life epo 4 batteries so i just need to put that relay in between this the positive point going into the solar charge controller the most positive point in that string of solar panels which actually reminds me generally in winter i put my two solar panels in parallel rather than in series because that seems to give me a better result so perhaps that's something i should do now Right, well I've wired all this up now and while I was doing it I realised that one of my 50 watt panels on the roof of the shed here wasn't actually connected to anything. So I've now connected that in here as well. So I now have three 50 watt monocrystalline panels all in parallel uh, giving me a total of 150 watts if we get anywhere near that in this weather. Um, 
all their negatives are common here and all their positives are common over here. So the negative goes straight into the solar charge controller. The positive goes into the relay in its common port and then the solar charge controller is connected to the normally connected port. So this is acting effectively as a piece of wire at the moment. But when the temperature gets too low, well the uh, relay gets energised and uh, we switch over to the normally open connection here which at the moment is just dangling around in the breeze but that's okay for now because it just prevents the charging of my life epo 4 cells when the temperature is too low i have got an idea that i want to do something with my solar panels when the temperature is low but i think that's for another video hopefully you've enjoyed this video and if you did give me a thumbs up subscribe down below comment if you can and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.